Yo, what up, dawg? Sports and music every Tuesday with Mo Egger. Let's get it. Uh. But meanwhile, uh, I'm doing me. Y'all should go and do y'all. Real talk, I ain't worried about you goofballs. See, I got coyotes in my new yard. So high up in the hills, man, I'm looking like a new star. Ghetto, cause that's a sign of a come up. I done came a long way from that crib up on Homer. And that 91 Dynasty mama used to drive Focus, hope, and food steps what kept us alive Cause in the D, you better be stronger than Club Lane. Don't stunt, they ain't playing with them hunger games Cause like cream corn, they be running things from your heart What up, though, world? We back once again Sports and music with Mo Ager, man For another full week of sports and music We got the boy Yanni back in the building yep. Y'all know we missed him last week You know, we clowned him a few times, you know What? Just a little bit, man. All we, right, I got y'all. We ain't go too hard on you, baby. But yeah, man, my name is Maurice Ager, hailing from Detroit, Michigan. You know, Michigan State alumni, alumnus. You know, I love my school. I love my peoples over at Michigan State. Shout out to my old school. You know, we doing it big every week. You know, it's just going to be me and Yannick today, though. You know, we're going to be talking about some cool things Smashing. and... Some music, you yeah. know, some sports, you know, you know, basketball season just started, so you know, obviously, you know, we gotta talk about the hoops, you know, that's NBA, that's right up my alley. But yeah, man, this is sports and music. We're gonna have sports, um, guests, uh, entrepreneurs, artists, anything dealing with entertainment, life in general, man. Every week on this TV show, on this well, podcast show slash radio show, you know, in between. But um, yeah, I'm gonna let my boy introduce himself. This is my man Johnny. Yo, what's up? My name is Yannick Beats. I'm from everywhere. You're from USA, by the way, New Mexico. Uh, did music in New Mexico. Went to Phoenix. Did some uh, stuff for uh, Marty Stoudemire with music. And came to L.A. and I'm just doing everything, you know what I mean? Shoe coming out next month. Shoes. <laughs> Early next month. Late this month. Be ready. It's the NLS one. You know, I'm not going to go and repeat what I just said, but it is what it is. Shout out to Tempest. Uh, for the new uh, for the new gym as well, it just opened Absolutely. up. So we franchising, baby. Franchising. This ain't no joke. We franchising. We franchising. That Disney money. Disney money. <laughs> it's cool because you know we had Gabe on the show last week, right? And you know he briefly talked about um, the new the gym. You know we we kind of oh, talked man. about the the, te- the shoe too because you know we always you know we always discuss the shoe. And right. So we actually had the, the guy himself in here, and uh, it was real cool, man. We had a really good show. We had a prosperous show. We had a, our guy um, Lemanuel. He came in and just. You know, just just knock the head off with some some good knowledge. You know, some things that we need to know. He's a older individual who does life coach life coaching for people. You know, he talks about some of the realness. He talks about some of the things that's disturbing in our culture and the things that we can do to fix it. And it's amazing that you know, uh, on sports and music, we can bring people of all sorts and all kinds. And um, yeah, shout out to Gabe for coming on. Also, all right, yeah, we're doing our thing. Oh yeah, man. Yo, and shout out to my homie, homie E Jules. You know, over on uh, Euro Merc. You know, they they put together the nice jewels and you know we uh we out here rocking, you know, not too much, you know, just something light. Sub- so shout out to subtle. him. Something, you know. So what's going down, bro? What's the word? Uh well, you know, I was in Phoenix last week, um, for my birthday. Uh my team got blown out. Get him out of here. Um the Atlanta Falcons, they only play Cardinals like in the Cardinal Stadium like every three, four years, and every time it's around my birthday, so I always have to go. Um I was I had some good seats, man. My parents um actually got uh, some good seats. Me and my dad was there. We was chilling with some of the Falcons players' uh, uh, parents. It was just <laughs> funny because it was just us versus Cardinals. You know what I'm saying? But uh, were you doing a dance, man? This is what everybody wants to know. Was he doing a? I don't do that. I do this. I do this. I do. I do. I do this. I do the dirty bird, bro. Look, I love Atlanta Falcons so much. Bird. I love Atlanta Falcons so much. When I get rich, I'm going to have a house in Atlanta just so that I can see every, every game, every nah, home game. You watch I ain't no joke. The games. He want to be the I'm all no the game I'm no joke guy. when it comes to this Falcons. It's all good, man. Hey, man, they still get blown on every game, man. But peep game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, man, we out here, man. It's sports and music, man. Um, still yeah. true. Yeah, it's pretty cool, you know. Um, you know, just... A few things I wanted to, you know, kind of discuss and address. Of course, you know, I have to keep reminding you guys of a Grammy nomination. You know, we would know December 6th at the Grammy party slash concert who's nominated. At this point, no one's nominated. 
You know, I'm in the category of 44 other artists. So, You're nominated, bro. Let's get it. That's why you just speak it into existence. Speak it into existence, man. That's why I'm speaking about it, man. This my this is my avenue to speak about anything. But you know what, man? You know we need to take a quick commercial break, man. We'll be right back. This is sports and music with Mo Egger. We on Easy Way TV. And uh, make sure you guys follow us on the new Easy Way TV fan page on Facebook also. Let's go. Back once again, it's your boy Mo Ager, sports and music, man, and that's that good drink. I'm talking about that good Alaskan water. Nope. I'm talking about that good glacier water, man, with the blue at the bottom of the blue, and this look like it's on top of the gray, but it's all good, man, and it's here to stay. Right. Yeah. You know what's good with this, though? Once you get this, you got to get this whenever you hear that, that song, Interlock System. Interlock System is driving me nuts. What? Don't drink and drive a deal. Drink water. Uh -uh. Drink water. <laughs> but yeah, man, we back once again. So shout out to Terrence, man. Still waiting on my water. <laughs> Still waiting on my water. But um, yeah, man, it's all good, man. So finally, we we get an interview with Kendrick Lamar talking about the control verse, talking about his relationship with Eminem. Him being on Eminem's album, which is a privilege, you know, it's good for Eminem to actually not be bitter and go back and get a younger guy and and um, put him in the same light in the same uh, genre is him, you know, he kind of literally took him out of the hip-hop world and gave him a different type of um, type of record, you know what I mean? Right. So, let's play that interview real quick, bro. Play that, play that, play that. You know, like I said before, whoever's calling up here, they have to be they have to be, like, straight up, they did records with Eminem. Nicki Minaj called earlier. She did a record with Eminem. I don't want no other artists calling up here trying to get shined. If you ain't doing no record with Eminem, don't call up here. What Kendrick Lamar? What up with it? What up, son? <laughs> what up, boy? What up, God? Yo, your man was bigging you up, man. You really uh spiced everybody out there, man. All the legends are spiced right now. No homo, but everybody's everybody's hype. Man, it's a privilege. It's a privilege, especially with him. Jesus Christ. I mean, did you force the transition? All this dumbing down, all this whack hooks and people dancing. I mean, it's fun. I mean, we have a good time in the club. The hooks are cool. Everybody's popping bottles. But you forced the transition. Like, you brought it in. Like, you opened the fucking door. Appreciate it. Really, shit. I just wanted to do what I like. Yeah. You know, stick to my script and what I came up to. Not to knock anybody else's music. I love everything else everybody else doing too, but I got to stay in my lane and keeping me 100, you know? So that was the whole thing from the gate. Yo, man, you need to tell me 
who came close. There were so many like responses. Who came close to your shit to control? Who came close to control? Can you say that on air? Or nobody came yeah, close. <laughs> no, I liked it. I liked it Los. Oh. It, was, it was crazy. Los did his thing. And he from New York too. He killed it. Damn, man. Jay-Z didn't call you about that King of New York stuff? Like, Yo, what up, <laughs> nah. <laughs> he, he took it as all in fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then, you know, this is Eminem's weekend, man. How how is it like how was you how were you introduced to him? Was it like through Dre or it was another way? Because you know, I thought oh, first, I, I, I mean M was I'm sorry. It was Coachella. Oh, it was Coachella. Coachella. Okay. Yeah, the first time I met him, but we spoke briefly, so I didn't really get to hang with him. Then my second time around. Yeah, so yeah, that's the Eminem, you know, and uh, Kendrick Lamar situation. You know, it's the young king talking about the the old king. You know what I mean? The the rap god talking about you know the, the little rap lord. You know what I mean? So, how you feel about that, man? I know you heard the record with him and Eminem on the album. <sighs> man, I just. Uh, you know what? Both of them spaz on it. First off, first off, let me go ahead and say this. I am, I am actually happy to actually see Eminem get somebody who's popping and put him on the record. So that just yeah. shows a lot of respect. That shows how dope Kendrick really is because you yeah. know he don't really mess with people who ain't really no lyricists. Like Absolutely. you got to, you got to hold your own to even to even be with. Even featured on an Eminem album, you have to hold your own. As a, as a rapper, you have to be on your on point. Kendrick did what he was supposed to do for the record, mm -hmm. but I know deep down inside, Kendrick's like, "Dog, you could have could have gave me another beat to kill because this joint from Rick Rubin is." <laughs> yo, everything. <laughs> Yo, let's keep it real, dog. I mean, I understand Rick Rubin is a legend, but I ain't like that at all. It's like they feel it. It's, they it's, they read him. It's like, all right. Okay, now. look. He's, okay, Rick Rubin is a god producer, right? So really, he's one of those people, like, he really can't do anything wrong because he's not really making the tracks out of just making the tracks to, to, to fit any trend. He's just making his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is you're making your own thing. And I really wasn't feeling that... That's two misses from Rick, dog. It is almost like the, the, couple, the couple records that Rick Rubin produced for Eminem on the album. It sounds like they were those joints when you remix, you take the vocals and put it to a beat. Right. That's what it sounded like. I'm like, huh, that sound like M rapping on a, 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 a Dre beat or something. Yeah, Dre or it, it was, Beastie Boys track. It was weird. But, Which is, you know. Yeah, but shout out to that record, Groundhog's Day. Woo. I haven't shout heard Shout out to Cardiac, man. He got busy on that boy. Yo, I, I know Cardiac was like, I'm going to give it my all. That this might be my only time. Yeah, it was produced by him, and like you know, obviously they had to put two other people on there. But. You know what's weird? I was checking on the wiki on the wiki um, report, just just just, just um, reading who the producer. DJ Khalil only has one track. Has that surprisingly that, survival? I was like, what? You know what? I think Eminem took it upon himself to really. He kept he kept it with Louis Resto. He kept it with Ruben uh, himself. Himself is like and, six um, seven yeah, tracks. Yeah, he he produced a lot of the the, uh, the record, but. You know, it was Marshall Mathers LP, too. You know, he produced Marshall Mathers LP, too. So he felt like he had to bring back that essence and that sound. But I was surprised I didn't see uh, Boy Wonder, just, uh, maybe a T minus. I just knew I was going to see Boy Wonder on the album. But, you know, he didn't make it. But uh, I'm just surprised by the Khalil, man. I'm surprised. I know Khalil probably, Khalil. Gave, probably, Khalil probably sent him mad dope tracks. Yeah. And, 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 and was probably like, I like this one. But I mean, Khalil got paid off that though. They got yeah, paid off. Survival it's on the game. was the biggest record on there, considering it's the Call of Duty. Yeah, it's like soundtrack official. Song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by no means, like yeah, yeah. he's tripping. You yeah, know, he got Khalil's the, not tripping at all. He got the first release, and and it was cool. You know, um, I think Eminem really kept it in house on this one. You know, he had Alice the Kid on there. You know, and this track that Alice the Kid did, you know, was particularly <laughs> a lot different than the records that he usually produces. I mean, the joints I usually hear from right. Eminem, and it kind of got that same type of feel, right. which is dope. But Alex the Kid is funny is funny because Alex Kid, I've actually met Alex the Kid, which he's a real cool dude. Shout out to Alex. Um, he tends to only, whenever he produces a track for anybody, he has his artist on it. So that record had That's, to have like Skylar or somebody. Skylar Gray. Yeah, or, somebody. Skylar Gray was on the album. Yeah, so it, she had She wasn't to, on the record that he produced, though. He was, was it? Nah. What? Eminem loves Skylar Gray. I noticed that. Well, he, he executive produced her album, which failed. That album failed. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. That was Alex the Kid's situation, too, with in it through Interscope, too. Right. She's dope. She's she is dope. dope. But I just think that she... She, she got paid, though, because she yeah, did the Puffy yeah. joint. Puffy joint helped her out. I think she uh, helped co-wrote 
a song for Puffy, a big record. I forgot what it was. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But no, she's incredible. That's one thing Eminem always does. I think when people submit records to Eminem, they just, he just keeps to whoever's singing on it. Hook. Right. Like, I remember uh, Kobe a couple years ago. Remember mm-hmm. the kid Kobe? Yeah. They probably, a producer submitted him with the hook, and he was like, just keep him on there. They just beef it up, and he's like, all right. He, it's almost like M want nobodies on his album. Right. But see, this is the thing. Like, I got to ask you a question. Do you think that M is a good A&R for his own label? Do you think he could actually find talent on his own? Because to me, he hasn't really found anybody that is really – change the game. You know what I'm saying? You know what? You're right. Just because, you know, you have guys like Bobby Creekwater, Cassius. Right. uh, Obi Trice was a success. Obi Trice was a success. Platinum twice. Yeah. So, I mean, that's considered. But that was was also in the age of every, you could go platinum. And that was a time where, you know, Shady Aftermaths were really bullies in the game. Exactly, exactly. where whatever they put out at that time was great. D12 even. You know what I'm saying? They all. D12 was popping. Yeah. Um, I think, um, I mean, Slaughterhouse. But yeah, but they didn't really find them. They didn't really. They're all established artists before yeah. him. It's kind of hard to say. I, like, I, I don't think Cassius. Cassius was cool, but I don't think Cassius was able to get out of that. It was a weird st- space he was in. He was yeah. almost into a, a, a gangster space, but at the same time, it's like all right, the whole Orange County thing kind of was was kind of weird. Right, right. At times, but you know, Cassius was dope. Bobby Crewrider, I think he's from Atlanta. He was actually yeah, cold. Yeah, he was actually dope. He was cold. Him and um Stat Quo had a um Stat Quo was dope too. Stat, Stat Quo nice. and him um actually had a um they have a uh a group. I think they're called FUPM. But they had they had one dope record dog and I haven't heard anything else from them cuz they came together. Wow. But um you know, on top of that, you know, it's just um you know, I think Rick Rubin is really been able to shine this year, you know, being being in the Jay Z yes, commercial, yes, then yes. doing the Kanye joint, right. and then you know, obviously doing the Eminem joint. Right. Uh, I think Rick Rubin is is dope producer. He's a legend, and he will always be a legend. And uh, I think this is a good time for him to come back because you know he brought back that rock hip hop type sound. But I can honestly say I, I'm not feeling it. I'm sorry. I feel you. I feel you. You know who Rick Rubin would work great for? MGK. Yeah, I see that. That would be the it's best, perfect. the perfect he's situation. He's young, he's wild, he might, oh, they, he don't care about breaking a yes. few bones at he's a like show. He's like a rock, he's like the rock, hip. he's a rock star yeah. who happens to do hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So, that would be a great situation for him. I mean, shout out to MGK, man. I think you need to holler at Rick Rubin or let Bad Boy holler at, at, at Rubin, Rick Rubin for that. Cause yeah. That would be a great look for him. That's cool, but man, let's move on to some of these hoops, doggy. All right, man, we got the East, the West, <laughs> we got the Pacers 3-0. Three three and oh. Okay. The Sixers three and one. Okay. Pistons, Detroit. What up though? Two and one. Okay. Miami two and two. You know what that's about. Uh, Raptors two and one. On the West, we have the Clippers three and one. Rockets okay. three and one. The Wolves three and one. Warriors three and one. OKC three and one. And Chicago is doing really what bad, but I put them on here for a reason. But yep. The Pacers, man. What's up with them, man? They they looking good, man. Well, the Pacers look. The Pacers are the are the biggest team in the league. Period. They got the to me. They have the biggest men. The, <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, they have the biggest men on on, on the court. Right. They have the biggest men on the court. Their team. Their, big their Indiana team, yeah, basketball yeah. players. Dude, they're 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 big dudes, dog. They're like six four and up. Like they ain't no small dude. They coming yeah. through. Like if they gonna go into the lane, they gonna come into the lane. They've yeah. been big since last year. They got Them, and Denver's like that too. Denver is that's a big team. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So they're gonna they're gonna be some heavyweights, man. And they still got Danny, but they're gonna use him for leverage. I think they're gonna get a, they're gonna get rid of Danny Green. Yeah, they're gonna probably pick yeah. up a nice little point guard. Yeah. At cool some little point. fast point guard. It was crazy. I was watching the Miami Heat game. I watched the opener against the Chicago Bulls. Uh-huh. I, was, I was in a layover in the airport on my way to Miami. It was crazy. And um they destroyed the Bulls. You know what? And um the next game. I watched the Philadelphia 76ers get out to a 22 to 2 lead on the Heat. I was like, this not looking too good because Sixers you know what? Are fast. Sixers are looking fast. good. They're fast. They're fast. With Doug Collins is uh, coaching, or it, uh, I don't yeah, I believe yo, so, but they they're looking fast. really good, bro. It's a fast team, dude. They're looking good, man. They're looking good. Those young boys looking no good. No Bynum. No Bynum. No nah, Bynum is Bynum is actually with the with the Cavaliers. The Cavs, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. No, yeah. I'm saying Sixers with no Bynum. They 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 got they going in. That's incredible, man. It's, it's amazing, you know how these young boys and they don't look scared. They just like nah, man, they we ready. getting it. They ready. They, they ready, man. They, uh, then, who you feeling? Who who who? Right now, who's the team that you like is really surprising other than Sixers? Um, you know what, man? I still like Miami. 
I still yeah. might like Miami. Two and two so is a funny two and two. Yeah, that don't, that's that, a that laughter. Is, this is very, very early in the season right now. <laughs> this piece of paper is going to be a lot different. Yeah, yeah. Come um, June sometime, yeah. but I'm liking them just because you know I feel like, um, you know they're 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 like they got better. You know, you know LeBron's averaging 23 points, eight assists, five rebounds. Wade is averaging 18, four and four. Bosh is averaging 20 and seven. He has to. But I think Thank that God, um, Bosh. I think. Miami can be really good if LeBron averaged 25 this year, 8, maybe 7 or 8. I don't think Ooh, he has to average lot. 30 for them to win. But he has to as average long as a Wade averaged. You, you know, the, the key to this is, is Wade averaging. Actually, Wade staying healthy throughout the whole season. If Wade can average 23 points a game. Oh, they're, they're going to win. They're going to win. Yeah, and because Bosch is going to clean up. Bosch can still hit him with a, with a 15 and 10. He can have a 15 and 10 record. I think Bosch can average 20. Oh, I he could definitely. Oh do yeah, that. shout out to Bosch, man. Um, congratulations, congratulations on a new kid, man. Salute to you, brother. I wish we had some claps. You know what I mean? You my brother from another mother, man. Tell your moms yeah, I said hi, man. And yeah, man, keep pushing, man. Good family, man. Yeah, Chris Bosch, man. I'm tired of people clowning my guy, man. But you be putting uh, that you, on yourself, yo, some yeah, day, brother. You be going behind those cameras looking like you said, man. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be funny though. He'd do funny the, as hell. He be he be a video bombing. He be like, yeah, but they they. That's not funny when you know when they get that gear, Instagram with, with Bosh. Everybody in the back. just like everybody uh-huh. just be so like people just be trying to have fun. You know what I'm saying? I ain't been on Instagram in like a week, dog. I don't even do that. You can't. Even, you will never find me on Instagram. Sorry, you barely find me on Twitter. So if you guys are checking out my Twitter, sorry, I don't really write to it. I don't really do that. I don't really do the social media. That's crazy. Why not? It's, it's a whole nother subject, man. I just feel like you. If you want to catch me, you got the. You have to. Catch me on stuff like this on Easy Way TV, or you catch me on whenever I come out with something. You ain't just gonna catch me on it blue. Mm. I'm not gonna put myself out there. I want everybody to come and see me. Am I selfish? I'm supposed to be. I'm an artist. <laughs> he answered the question. It's I up. answered my own question. Um, that's fine. See, <laughs> that's, how, that's what I. All do. right, man. Derrick Rose, man. He's averaging 14 points, four assists, 33 minutes a game, five turnovers. Shooting twenty eight percent from the field, twenty six from the three. What's your take? Uh, it's it's about the same. So he always starts this way though. Hmm? Every year, every year he's not, he's not, he's really not a big percentage guy. Like his percentages are always kind of low. He just shoots a lot. I mean, he's gonna mid season he's gonna be out of, out of control. He's getting a lot. He's getting his confidence back, man. You, so I'm not the numbers is you miss one important stat five turnovers. He's averaging more turnovers than he averaging um, assists. He's trying to get his. He's trying to get his. his he's trying to get his groove back. Trying to get his groove back, man. But he just came back. From you know, ACL. at times he's looking really good though. It's like, yeah, I saw some hot. I'm like, yeah, man, D Rose look good. But I think like, he throw his body too much though, man. That's it's going I hate to say it, but he needs to slow down on going to the hoop so hard. He just remind me of one of those guys you don't like playing against who just when they go they go all in when it comes to a layup. Like yeah, and it's. It's gonna hurt him in the long run, man, because he's going look, all the way in. Look at Dwayne dude. Wade. Dwayne right. Wade was the same as Zach Wade. Right. In. You know, he he really sacrificed his body early on, which is cool. You know, at that time when you're young, man, you, that's how you play. Like, right. You can't tell a, a, an aggressive player not to play aggressive when they're 23, 24 years old. So he's trying to right. get to the rack, trying right. to get to the cup, create. But you know, like you just said, man, it, it's actually taking a toll on him now. Uh, like, yeah, he wears right. two knee braces. Oh, how old is he? Twenty four. Oh man, he's yeah, it's it's pretty bad, man. Uh, uh, another thing is another little man who used to go in all the time to the hoop. Allen Iverson retired. What's up, AI man? AI man, he changed. AI, the my game, dog. Guy. I hate it. I hate it had to be him. <laughs> I, I thought I was gonna see M. I mean, I thought I was you wasn't with you when you were shooting in the gym. Right. That's what. Happened. Right. Uh, you didn't practice. I, I thought so AI I man. I thought AI was. I thought for sure AI was just gonna be in the league like to the end, man. You know what I'm saying? They kind of blackballed him, and you know he took a lot of slack for bringing what we now see as the norm to the game. Everybody wearing, like you said, everybody wearing tattoos now. He and brought he, that. He brought. The, he brought the cornrows. He brought that. He brought. He brought the the, the sleeve. real hip hop. The sleeve. You know what I'm saying? He shook Jordan, man. He did he that. He shook Jay, man. AI was a true game changer. He was, man. But, you know, at One times. One of the best pound he, for pound. When he could have, you know, um, changed things in his life and his career, he didn't. You know, he he, he upset the wrong people. He didn't um, He didn't play the game as he should. You know, it's almost like he 
he didn't understand that, you know, that rock stardom dies as you get older. Right. So that's why you have a Juwan Jane. I mean, um, I'm sorry, Juwan Howard. Juwan Howard that can stick around for 20 plus years because he understands that, you know what, man, I have to be a professional. I have to, you know, um, right. be a certain way to, in order to stick around and, and be useful. Right. Because you know what, man, it's, it's players coming in the league that's going to get better every single year, and you know, at your at your position, and if you upset the people that 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 care about you the most when you're the hottest, you know, yeah. when it's time for you to actually need their help, it's, it's not nowhere to be found. Yeah. So I think that's one thing he's dealing with. Luckily, he has the Reebok contract, the lifelong for Reebok life. contract. And, um, lifetime. I don't, lifetime think they, I don't even think they do that anymore. They don't even do that anymore. No, no, they won't. They won't. Reebok, actually, you know what, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for AI, Reebok would probably be gone because Reebok at the time they had re they had the pumps and then for the pumps was going in but then they had a gap for like six seven years of just straight losing nobody was wearing Reeboks mm -hmm. and then AI came and it was like yo let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and uh give him a lifetime deal man a lifetime so. well this is sports and music man it's always gonna be sports and music for a lifetime man you know why because we're doing the right things man we're about to take a quick commercial break man let's get it a fine watch does more than tell time it makes a statement. Havana watches. Fine watches exclusively for you. Sophisticated Havana dress watches. Men's and women's styles. Your elegant timepiece. Sporty Havana casual watches. Trendy styles in hip colors. Your go everywhere watch. Your Havana watch is backed by our top to bottom one year warranty. Visit HavanaWatches.com. Havana watches. Fine watches exclusively for you. Let's get it, man. We back once again, man. You know what, man? Here on Sports and Music, man, you never know what we're going to hit you with, man. We have a special guest. My man's drummer boy himself. You hey, know? yeah. Hello from Memphis, man. Boy, what's happening? What's Introduce happening? Introduce yourself, man. I'm sure they know you, but. Man, you know. I go by the name of Drummer Boy, aka D Boy Fresh, man. Producer Put On, Producer Money to Blow, Producer No Hands. I'm round, round on getting it. Check out the website, drumsquad.com. It's going down, man. It's a blessing to be here, man. We on Twitter, Drummer Boy Fresh. No ER. You know what I mean? Straight out the M. Shout out to my dog, Yo Gotti. You know what I'm saying? It's going down, man. That's what it is, man. Yes, sir. So what brings you out here to sunny California, brother? Man, you know, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been low key, like you know what I'm saying, having a, having a couple of little, little little player play pads out here. You okay. Know what I'm so you know what I mean, just uh, getting that whiff of the city. You know, L.A. always been uh, open arms, and the California lifestyle always been open arms and motivation for me. You know what I'm saying? Growing up as a kid, one of my favorite games was cruising. And just seeing that California tag on the back of that whip every yeah. time got me, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you can go outside right now and see me whipping with the California tag. It's, it's like I'm living a dream, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what's, what's up. up man. I wonder, um, you know what? Some of the things I used to hear about you, bro, I heard you used to play a little ball. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely ball. You know what I'm saying? I had uh, V1, uh, D1, D2 scholarships. You know what I'm saying? I was on the varsity squad throughout high school. And I actually got on with the beats because I was making beats during the warm-ups. Uh, so that's sports music for you. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I make the varsity basketball team, you know what I mean? And then I start doing our warm-ups as we come out to all our home games. So all the palm girls, all the cheerleaders would have to learn routines to my music and whatnot and started, you know, drum boy, drum boy. Nah, that's what's nah, nah. up. So all the, the away teams would, you know what I'm saying, get familiar with how we do things in our hometown. I mean, in our uh, home arena, you know what I mean? And uh, we went to state my last year, senior year. I came up with uh, Dwayne Lee, son, Keith Lee. Okay, that's you know what I'm saying. So you know what I'm saying. Little Dwayne was a, uh, you know, all the University of Memphis Tiger fans know about Keith Lee. You know what I'm saying. They know about Larry Finch and Penny Hardaway and Penny. yeah, uh, yeah, Penny. Uh, Todd Day. You know what I'm saying. Ooh, Todd Perry. Day was cold when he was playing with the Bucks. I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. Cold. So you know what I mean. D Rose came through University of Memphis and 
did his thing, you know what I mean? So we got a lot of history, man. I had scholarship at University of Memphis, uh, Nolan Richardson scholarship, MTSU, Western Kentucky. I was just getting too much money coming out of high school. I was making beats, came oh, up. Man. I was doing beats for Gotti at that particular time, for Tila, um, 3-6 Mafia, against the Boo, Player Fly, 8-Ball and MJG, and um, just battling between that. And, and the balling, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I was in the dunk contest doing three sixes, all that, but it's like I, I, I always thought I was going to get by six two, six three. I'm about 5'11", 6 foot. Ah, oh, that's all good. So I was like, you know, if I would have got six three, yeah, six four, yeah, man, yeah. it probably would have been a different yeah. story, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we here, though, man. You know what I'm saying? All Definitely. Right. That's what's up, man. You know For what? Sure. You know, that's, you know, in particular path, you know, I chose, you know, I was in the league for a couple years, and, you know, um, my love for music overcame, you know, overshadowed my basketball career. You know, I right. love the music so much. I'm like, man, you know what? I want to go do this full time. Right. And during the years of the uh, the lockout, that's the year I came out here to to really lock in and do my music. You know, my right. music production and, and right. banging out beats and you know doing my thing of that sort. Right. Man, so you got the new mixtape out with DJ Paul. Yeah, Clash of the Titans. We just dropped that thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to DJ Screen. You know what I'm saying? Coming through, hosting that thing. Um, it's crazy. Like, like I was just saying on, on my Instagram, I think one of my most recent Instagram was uh, just like how I grew up as a kid looking up. It, it, it's just crazy how you earn a respect from somebody you looked up to as a kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now, like, I'm, 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 I was in here the other day speaking on longevity with one of the greats, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, I grew up, I remember, like, sneaking and going and buying exactly. doggy style. You know what I'm saying? I was 11 years old. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I had to go sneaking by this junk. You know what I mean? After so, school, dog like, mouth. where we at now, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, 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 you know, shout out to Master P, man. Shout out to uh, Pastor Troy and, you know, Young Jeezy. Uh, um, um, mm -hmm. So, many guys who just really took me serious as a little bro you know what I'm saying because yeah. I was a young nigga like 15 16 selling beats and getting respect you know what I'm saying what's yo up. Gotti bringing them duffels through and you know what yeah. I'm saying and, and just seeing where we got today it, it's a blessing man you know what I'm saying so we we we, we pass it on and, and, and keep marching through these streets man clash of the titans you know what I'm saying we on the microphone you know a lot of guys didn't know I was rapping you know what I'm saying? We got the beats, we got the hooks, we got the verses, and, and really just putting their face out there, man, because it's so many hits, it's so many artists that I don't want to say I made, but, like, I put them in a better position. Absolutely. Right. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And, and you know, they might do the video to the song, I didn't even call a nigga. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Or I see different producers in the video, but I'm not in the video, right. and so now everybody think these niggas produced the song when I, right. you know great. what I mean? And it's like, you know, everywhere we go, Oh, you drum! Oh, you drum! Oh, you drum! Oh, it's like the oh, you drummer boy it's factor. Like you gotta right. reintroduce yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like Which is player, cause like once the chicks do me, oh, now I get it. Once yeah. the niggas do, oh, snap! Right. So now there's like a bum rush. Ever since a nigga been rapping, you know what I'm saying? So if you really want to catch up, the first rap mixtape I ever dropped, The Birth of D-Boy Fresh, mm -hmm. live mixtapes is on iTunes. You know what I mean? We came back with the unification process of Memphis. Welcome to my city, volume one. Welcome to my city, volume two. You That's know what I'm right. saying? And just putting all of the hottest rappers in one pot. You know what I'm saying? My city ain't never seen that. You know what I mean? We put Juicy J and Yo Gotti and, and, and Young Jeezy all on for what? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And everybody was like, how did that happen? Like, we, we, we do things that, that, that people think can't happen. You know what I'm saying? They said, no hands was too slow. Why are you putting Walk on on a record with uh, Roscoe Dash and Wale? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Walk a street nigga. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? I like, let me do what I do. These ladies need a lady record from yeah. my man. You know what I'm saying? Hold tight, <laughs> sit back. You know what I mean? And, 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 and bam, you know what I'm saying? 30 million in the bank for the label. So just sit back, man. Let me let me, let me me make you the money, man. Right, right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let me do me, man. Because we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't sat back, been quiet, and just gave you the beats, blah, 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 and watched uh. you. Cats not know what to do with them. So let me do me, man. Just just, just shut the fuck up. Listen. <laughs> let D-Boy be D-Boy, man. Because that, that's what D-Boy Fresh do. He say what Drummer Boy don't really want to say. Oh, so you D-Boy Oh yeah, yeah. We oh, D boy okay. fresh, you know what right I'm saying. On. Drummer boy fresh, man. It's a, it's a, it's a fashion. We definitely got the passion for fashion and been repping, you know, L I G and Crooks yeah. and Castle and Diamond Company and, and Sean John three piece suits and, you know what I mean. The list go on and on. All of these different companies, five, four, young and reckless that we repping and and and, and 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 put on the forefront. So you know, it's time that we get this fresh fan right. You know what I mean. We got the fresh family in the building. You yeah. know what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what we we got my shit pop, man. I got a liquor out there. We got the we. 
got the sparkling wine. Right? You know what I'm saying? Pop one of them Marinos, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? I done supported the streets for so goddamn long. It's time for y'all to support me, goddamn it. Yeah. <laughs> we got the Can we get an applause, fresh though? products, yo, goddamn yo, it. Yo, that's something me and my Shit. man talk about all yo, the time. Bro. All the time. As producers. Yeah, yeah. And as producers, like, we, you know, just like you said, like, it gets to a point where you make all these beats for these people. Nobody knows that you did it. And it's like, I ain't getting credit for nothing. When they go on tour, I ain't getting none of that bread. Yeah. Exactly. But you adult, you know, when you already a dope rapper and you already cool and you feeding these people lines, you see them making money, crazy money that you ain't seen, you like, look. Yeah, and then it's, it's, it's cool when the cat will throw you a kickback or throw you a shout out or bring you out right. on the stage and, you know what I'm saying, throw you the little under the table duffel and woo woo woo. It's a couple real cats out there. Yeah. True. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, it ain't too many of them. You know what I'm right. saying? So I, 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 I salute. My dog Rocco, you know what I'm saying? Man, a, a free Gucci man, you know what I'm saying? The world on his back, but I still salute my real cats, man. You know, Yo Gotti, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Young Dolph, newest member coming out of Memphis, doing his thing, Don Tripp, Starlito. You know what I'm saying? We, we we holding the city down and doing what we supposed to do, man. Right. So, so, that, so your biggest advice for, like, producers, you know what I'm saying? Me and him are both producer artists, so your biggest advice right now is really just take the bull by the horn and do you. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? It's like waiting on most artists to put you on is like that's out of the question. Like, oh yeah, yeah, you can't do it. You depend on somebody else, man, for your kingdom. You know, you ain't gonna get to it. You're not gonna get to it. You're not gonna see it. That's what's up. You know what so, I mean? what, like for the producer heads, man, what are you using as, to to produce your records right now? Man, I'm using all kind of joints. Uh, like I'm I'm um still on the M3, the Korg. You know what I'm saying? Still using like a lot of outboard gear. Niggas be looking at me crazy coming in the studio with all this equipment. Like, well, <laughs> you you know you could just bring a laptop and have all this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, I do that sometimes too. Like I come in the studio with just a laptop, like Logic or straight. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. um, 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 the Aka. You know, I got I got that Kai software with the Renaissance and the NPC studio and all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a I'm a four thousand, like like dummy man. Like I'm I just go dumb on that four thousand yeah. man NPC. I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of the NPC like. But some little pads you know coming saying? off that joint. Yeah 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 yeah. I had to redo they my do buttons like every five. six months, man. My joints be like, <laughs> damn. That's Funny, what's up. Yo, I, what, I got a, got a story, man. I actually met a uh, drummer boy like five six years ago when I used to do stuff with Amari Stoudemire. Shout yeah. out to a Amari, man. Yeah, T King. <laughs> what's up? That's my that's my yeah. big homie. That's my big bro, Travis King, man, and uh. Drummer Boy came down to Phoenix, man. I met Drummer Boy, man. He was such a cool dude, man, and, and said some important things to me and kind of changed the way that I approach stuff because I saw him coming in there. He had his gear, custom-made D-Boy Fresh gear, and I was yeah. like, what? You know, he sit back and he was on his own stuff, you know what I'm saying? But everybody had to respect what he had to say because he was the guy who came in with the hits, you know what I'm saying? So because of that, man, it's, it's funny to see him now. Man, he's just he's that guy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it's it's crazy, man. Man, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. But it's it's a blessing. Like I don't use that to like get over though. Like, right. see, that's the thing. That's why a lot of people be like, man, how you still who you are? How you how you how you man see your longevity, man? How you make it ten years in the game? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's like I, I I don't use this to an advantage. Like I, like we still humans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I still see my dogs on the street. Niggas know they can come holler at me. Like I'm right. very approachable. What's happening? Like it's all love. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. we speak. We give advice on spot. I take CDs. I listen to them. You know what I'm saying? I give cats emails. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I always have that opportunity or that outlet. You know what I'm saying? We started Drum Squad DJs just to be able to give back to the DJs who play my shit. Yeah. It's all so about let me give you others, man. Yeah. Let me let me give you a squad of DJs that can play your shit. Now what's up, little homie? Y'all, you got some? All right, holler at my DJ. Right. Holla at my, holla at, you know what I'm saying? I got, I always got a, a area to point somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to be the next fashion? Okay, man, then holla at my. Oh, you want to be, you know what I'm saying, work at the studio? Okay, holla at my crew. Yeah, oh, you need, connected. you want a street team? Man, move, move. Whatever you need, we got a way to point you in the right direction. And that's what we missing, man, as youth, as, as the youngsters, man. You don't got no direction. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if they don't got no direction, if you ain't pointing them in the right direction or pointing them in a way where you feel like that's, it's going to benefit them or help them or encourage them, stimulate them, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't really doing nothing, you know what I'm saying? And not bringing them back to your community, man. You just, you just like. You're just out here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I feel like the game has changed. I know you, you came in the game pretty early. As a producer, you know what I mean? Just getting placements and getting in a studio with these different guys. How you feel like the internet age has kind of hurt, you know, the, the producers who actually get it in versus, you know, um, you know, some producers who, you know, might sell their beats for 99 cents on the internet to, you know, how you feel like that's hurt, hurt you or helped you in the past couple of years? I mean, really, like, you know, a lot of times taking away from a relationship is only hurting yourself so for me i'm still out here grinding in the streets i know the streets is first and foremost internet comes second to me 
Mm-hmm. So I got to like physically dap you up like face to face and know, OK, this is a good dude. I got to That's the only way I can feel your spirit. Yeah. That's the one thing left in this world that we can only do. Yeah. Everything else you can do through the Internet. You can turn on the power. You can turn on the alarm system. You can yeah. make your garage go up and down. You can yeah. transfer your money through your bank account. You can do fax, whatever, sign paperwork. You can do everything on the Internet now. Yeah. But the one thing you can't do is feel somebody's spirit. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It's and different. that's one thing that I do well, you know what I mean? So I have to, like, eye to eye. I have to, you man, what's happening? You know what I mean? And I yeah. can, like, kind of feel or, or sense the gesture of what I say or suggest or, you know, we should try this or we should try that. You know what I mean? And it's if it's a chemistry, it's a chemistry. If it's not, it's going to bump heads. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not going to get exactly. it. He's not going to understand how to how to cop a beat from Drummer Boy. I'm telling him how to, but he still don't understand how to. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's it's, it's, it's all on that, that face-to-face. It's all on that relationship. All relationship. You know what I mean? I, I email beats to Jeezy. Yeah, I email beats to Big Sean. I didn't email beats to 2 Chains, But that was after, like, I had that relationship with them. Yeah, yep, exactly. So exactly. now that relationship part is done. All he needs is the beat. Now he can do what he need to do. That was some mistakes mm-hmm. I made early on in the game, you know, just trying to get placements. It's like I would get an email from somebody. Like, yeah, here's... Here's such and such email. I'm like, all right, bet. I load up a bunch of beats, send it to them. They might not ever get it, but it's like, it took me a while to realize, like, man, you got to know these. You got to really. Like right, said, so he can check for you, like you know, because he getting a thousand of them emails, and then you sending like exactly. twenty beats as opposed to like one or two that might just get me caught in. Ooh, yeah. man, that joint, dude. Hey, send me some more of them junk. Yeah. It's just like a potato chip. If you get somebody a good potato chip, they gonna want the bag. <laughs> Pringles, right. nigga. Right. Come on, Pringles, man. man. Lays. Right. <laughs> right. Flaming hot Cheetos, man. You, and you know what? The same thing that you said, man. It's like when you do send a record and they do like it. Do they accomplish what you intended? And it's like, dang, if you don't have that face to face, it's like, man, you didn't really get but, what but, I was But saying. it can go both ways, though. I know some True. producers that started off on the email, and because they delivered so much hot shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It yeah. was like, yo, they 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 they, they earn their relationship, you know yeah. what I'm saying, with a lot of guys, you know what I mean? So, you know, it, 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 you got to do your story, you know what I'm saying? You can't look yeah. at John Boy and be like, okay, I'm going to do exactly what he did. Be inspired, be motivated, but, like, do you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or, like, man, how you do your thing or how, you know what I'm saying, like Jimmy Jam. And Terry Lewis, like the OGs, or you look at Quincy, or you look at Beethoven, you can look at everybody's different. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? R. Kelly, Babyface, like Raphael Sadiq. I was at the airport the other day, man. I was on my way to Miami, man. I was listening to the Run Record, uh, Talk to Me, Mm -hmm. um, featuring Eminem. Mm -hmm. As my man was J Rock. Yeah. And um, we was talking about Eminem all day today on our show. And um, being from Detroit, man, that was always a dream to work with Eminem. What was it like to actually hear Eminem on one of your beats? Man, I mean, that joint was classic, like Freddie Gibbs, you know what I'm saying, spit some on the joint, you know, Jeezy. We had already had the joint put together, and it was crazy because uh, I reached out to Travis Barker, man. Travis just hit me like, yo, we got to do something, man. Shout out to Travis Barker, man. Cool, 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 good spirit dude. And, um, man, R.I.P. Chris, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Famous, you know what I'm saying? But, uh that 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 whole that whole Travis Barker like every time I work a dude it's just special man cuz dude came back like I, I like I was with them before the plane crash yeah you know what I'm saying and and, and and I was with like a lot of his people you know what I'm saying and they like show mad love just coming through the store and lacing me up with the gear and all of that and Travis was like man anything anytime you need me man holler at me right you know what I mean That's and that was up. like the last time I love. seen them dudes and then they got on the plane yeah so to hear that, like, okay, my boy Travis made it, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, R.I.P. Chris, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just, just, just genuine dudes, you know what I'm saying? And you, you, you appreciate that, you know what I'm saying? So when I did the record with Jeezy, I was like, man, this is like a year after the plane crash, you know what I'm saying? And Travis was, you know, you know, like, man, I'm back, man. Like, let, let's yeah, do something. Definitely. And it's the first record. That he played on ever. That's the first like combination of of drummer boy, Travis Barker. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Young Jeezy, Eminem, yeah, Freddie Gibbs. That's Talk to dope. me. I love that record. That's a dope record. You know what man. I'm saying? So it was unfortunate that that record couldn't get picked up by the label. Um, right. I think the budget was just too big. <laughs> we yeah, went too crazy like, on them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we got M, we got Travis, we got oh, Drama, man. Jeezy. Like, we got hey, man. It's like, what? It's a clean yeah. record, man. I yeah. love it. <laughs> but, but, but definitely, man, shout out to the fans who still support that record and listen to that record, got it on the playlist and all that, man.
That's it's a blessing. Saying. We had the horns. I had musicians. We got the yeah, pianos. And all that. All that of that like on. I had shout shit. out to Kenneth Whalem on the saxophone. He had the soprano saxophone yeah, on that man. thing, man. Stacked his vocals a thousand times. Yeah, that man. You know great. what I'm saying? Drummer boy live. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got that live musicianship. That's what's up, Come man. On, man. What's the difference between Atlanta music scene and then in California, man? What, what do you think feel is the best, the biggest difference right now? I mean, it's just really the culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's it's, it's all music. You know what I mean? And it's our music that make us feel good. It's our yeah. music that make us smile and, you know what I'm saying, make us dance, make us turn up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just different cultures, you know what I'm saying, and different uh, different styles of, of slang. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, it's all the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, to me. the business side of things, though? Um, the business side of it, you know, um, I, I, see, I see a lot more people, like, working together in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know Indeed. what I'm saying? In, in L.A., like, you know, everybody just got it already. So it, they don't need to work together because they already got it. So it's, first of all, a lot more money in L.A. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a lot, you know, most of the people who live here and work here are, like, rich as yeah. fuck. And people in Atlanta is, like, more on the grind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They on the come up. They go to Atlanta to come up. They go to Atlanta to get on. They go to Atlanta to be heard. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They go to Atlanta to like blend in and mesh. You know, Atlanta's like the black Hollywood. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And LA is like the real Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you, you, you can be somebody in Atlanta, but come to LA and not be nobody. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? Be real. like, who? Yeah. What? Who? <laughs> But in Atlanta, you the nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, that's why you, you know, everywhere I go, not just certain places, but everywhere I go, I'm humble. And I appreciate the territory that I'm on. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm on foreign territory. So you have to appreciate it. A lot of guys go to places and be cocky. Oh, man, shit, man. I'm from such, such, man. Yeah. Nigga, I can da 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 Man, salute. Right. Yeah, like, Good luck. Salute, <laughs> homie, like respect and that's why you got open arms it's right. anywhere i can go up and yeah. down northern or southern california and we gucci man well, i appreciate you coming on the show bro already man that's, that's a real talk man that's Absolutely. drummer boy man hey Let's yeah boy yes, we sir. about to take a cool commercial break and we'll be right back man it's sports Chill. music with mo Ager. let's get it Yeah, we back once again, sports and music with Mo Ager, the boy Yannick, man. We just had the the super producer, drummer boy in here, man, you know, promoting his new CD, Class of the Titans, man. Let y'all know we official, man. We do sports and music, man. You know, the best of the best, man. Why not? No special guests, you know. They just walk in, they just do whatever they want, you know what I mean? We in the building, man. Yeah. We out here working hard, man. We love it, man. Our next guest we're going to bring on is my boy D-Nice. Um... Meanwhile, I'm drinking my pit bull. It's really tasty. 
But yeah, man, I hope you guys, you know, tune in even more, man. It's like one week we had Trey Marshall and it's Zach. Right. The next week we have a um a big time producer. Next week we might have LeBron in here, man. I right. Don't know, Who man. knows, man? LeBron, my boy. Right. You he know what I'm saying? Come on the show. Yeah, yo, think about might it. Miss out. Think about it. You gotta think about it at some point. But man, yeah. How you feel about everything he talked about, man? I think it's cool because, you know, it's, it's, it's inspiring to see someone that's already established as a producer. Yeah, He's man. still like, it's man, a... you know what? I still want y'all to know who I am because I right. feel like he has more to express. Right. And I understand that considering we talked about it so much as being producers is not, and not being appreciated. Exactly. And, you know, and, and that's why I said what I said. Like, I just remember, I remember, of course, the Beats was popping, but he had his own line of, of clothes that was back then yeah he was branding himself back then you know what i'm saying and to see you know years later five five years later everybody know who drum boy is you know what yeah. i'm saying because he branded himself now he's able to you know become d-boy fresh you know what i'm saying and, and rap because he was a rapper first before he was actually a producer most of us most of us were <laughs> yeah most of exactly most of yeah. us were so you know for him to to get to that level to do that and actually besides uh uh three six mafia uh, and eight, uh, yeah, three, besides Three Six Mafia, he was he's the one who actually put Tennessee on the map with Yo Gotti. So, shout out to Tennessee, man. That's you know I got. First off, I forgot to say I do got family in Tennessee. So shout out to Milan, Tennessee. That's my dad's side of the family. We up in here, you know what I'm saying? Southern. Tennessee yeah. got some good ribs, dog. <laughs> the good barbecue sauce too. They got too. some real good ribs, man. Pork ribs. This one just place called um well. BB Kings. BB Kings. Fire. Yeah. Over there that's off of Memphis. That's in Memphis. It's hard yeah, in Memphis. Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. All day. You know, whenever we used to play in Memphis, I used to go right across the street and get that good barbecue, man, and spicy catfish. That pyramid. <laughs> but that's yeah. cool, man. You know what, man? We we were really privileged to be able to have such wonderful guests on this show, man. It, it shows that, you know, the um, the law of attraction is real because likes attracts likes. You know like-minded people somehow gravitate to each other man and we all out here trying to do the same things man you know we laugh and joke all the time but we all on our way to greatness in our own special way man and you heard it from them you know it's one of the things that you know we need to understand your path is different from someone else's not to say that you don't need help from the people who's made it before you but your path is different man and i feel like everyone that's doing something special they should feel comfortable knowing that exactly Exactly. You don't have to do what everybody else did. Exactly. Just do you, man, and hope and, and hopefully people get it, man. That's all we really want, especially as artists. Like, we come out, especially when we, especially me and him, we've had long talks, me and Mo, and, and it's like, we just hope people get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we know the tracks is gonna be dope, but we hope that you get it. That's it. You know what I mean? That's all we. That's all we really care about, man. We're artists. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we. This is an art to us. We really take this seriously. Mm -hmm. So we. That's why we can. We can relate with the drummer boy, or we can relate with the Pharrell, or even a Kanye when he rants. Yep. We can relate to that. I relate to Kanye because like he he he's in the upper echelon to where he really feels unappreciated. And he's made some some remarkable things happen in our culture. Right. But somehow he felt like he he doesn't get credit for it because, you know, obviously you knew he does things to make people be like, All right, man, knock it off. Yeah. But that's what it's about, man. You know, we're artists and we're we're all doing something special, man. We just wanna be appreciated for our craft and the things we're doing. And um and another thing that he said that was pretty cool, man, going to different territories, man, it's like you can't come to L.A. and just think that everything is going to be all Gucci for you just because you that guy in, in Houston or exactly. you were that guy in Chicago. It's almost like going to college to the NBA. It's like, all right, man, you were a guy in college, but guess what, man? You're a rookie in the NBA. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you got to really prove yourself all over again and be humble, man. That's, that's what it's about, man. We ain't here to – we're here to serve each other, man, ultimately, man, and – that's what it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, was, uh... What we doing, man? Was D-Nice supposed to be? Man, play that know. music video, man. <laughs> play that Motown music video. I thought film. it was gonna... All right. All righty. You know, I think I might have USB in here. Play that. Play that. Play that. Play that. They say it's only at the top, well I'm willing to try, and I'm not gonna stop. Yeah, I'm ready to fly, got a hell of a flow I'm a hell of a guy, and I'm ready to blow If you're ready to ride, yeah, uh If you're ready to ride, yeah, uh 
If you're ready to ride They say it's lonely at the top Well, I'm willing to try And I'm ready to blow If you're ready to ride huh. This is me and this mic And this leftover top I left over the purse Because I wanna fly I let my enemies live Because they wanna die I'm still chasing my goals Because I want the prize And I ain't waiting on the next man No, I ain't waiting on the x man I don't need a superhero for respect, man I got my one and only savior in heaven Telling me go and get them checks, man So I pray for it and go get They hating on my focus But the passion is driving me like a lotus And your passion is driving you like a broke whip Y'all ain't going nowhere fast Stuck up in your grip They say it's lonely at the top Well, I'm willing to try And I'm not gonna stop Yeah, I'm ready to fly Got a hell of a flow I'm a hell of a guy And I'm ready to blow If you're ready to ride Yeah, uh If you're ready to ride, yeah, uh, if you're ready to ride, they say it's lonely at the top, well I'm willing to try, try. and I'm ready to blow, if you're ready to ride. Not a fight ain't over, I'm Christ soldier, y'all need maintenance like a rover, hold up, when you kids gon' grow up, come up off that stroller, I'm in my own lane, no hope, I'ma grind every day, I'ma grind every day, and I don't care if it's a holiday, care away, Cause music is my getaway I'm about to throw my wings on and fly away Right away, and I got the right away Grammys all up in my face Grinding in my jammies, man, I'm feeling like a mile away Feeling like gay before he signed a check I gotta find a better way so I, They say it's only at the top Well, I'm willing to try And I'm not gonna stop Yeah, I'm ready to fly Got a hell of a flow I'm a hell of a guy And I'm ready to blow If you're ready to ride Yeah, uh If you're ready to ride Yeah, uh If you're ready to ride They say it's lonely at the top Well, I'm willing to try And I'm ready to blow If you're ready to ride Yeah, we back once again. That was my first video released off the Motown album. You know, here it is. I'm branding that right there, dog. That's just me. this is me, man. You know, stay stay tuned more for the story of this whole artwork, man. You know, I drew the artwork on a piece of paper at a taco joint. Went home, drew it over, got it digitalized by my dude Ness. What up, Ness? And uh, yeah, man, it's a whole movement, man. That's the that's the beauty of being an independent. You know, being a, being an independent producer. Uh, artists, you know, we can kind of take our time with our projects. There's no rush, man, you know, and I'll, I'm really just branding it, man. And the Interlock System video will be shot very soon and um, it will be coming out on the top of next year. You know, I'm going to re-release Interlock System, remix and master. You know, I'm working on getting it mixed by a special human being who, who's done a lot of special things in, in our community. <laughs> so I want you guys to stay tuned. But, uh, yeah, man. Right, man. Um, you know. It's gonna be dope. It's dope, man. It's dope, and uh, that interlock system. I can't wait till everybody sees that, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna, gonna be cool. Dope, so, you know, I felt like today, man. Finally, you know, might as well just r release something that won't be on the album, but it might be on the second. Okay. This is not mixed yet, but you know, me and me, me and Mo, we stay on some cool shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Play that. So go ahead and play that. We about to be gone. Peace out. Easy Way TV. Peace you know out. what it is. Ooh. I'll let you play. Sports music with Mo Ager. I'm on. Cool shit. Yeah, I need me and my trips on. Cool shit. Yeah. I'm always going to be on that. Cool shit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Cool shit. Thank God I'm on. Cool shit. Hashtag that. Cool shit. Okay, we on. Cool shit. You know I'm on. Cool shit. I'm on. Cool shit. Hashtag I'm on. Cool shit. You know I'm on cool shit. Okay, I'm on cool shit. Hashtag I'm on cool shit. Me and my friends we on cool shit. Hashtag that's cool shit. Okay, we on cool shit. Varnell Hill. What's up? What's you up? always think you on top of your game. You ain't on shit. I am. I got kicks out. I got like a strip. Look at you, with your thick ass and neck. Yo, nappy ass hair. Damn, okay. How the hell you cool? Alright. You, you broke as hell. Huh. Where you going? Okay, y'all be on, on that. that. I'm all on the shoes on the clothes right. rack. I mean, I'm all my shit, but she don't know that. You know I'm about to fall back. I got my whole format, and I'm about to have to move on. Bitches, kicks that I caught the